Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this is one of those videos with me with a bit of a coarse voice. Yeah, it's one of those days again. Anyway, sorry about that. So today we're going to discuss something really exciting. I mean, for people into, I guess, black holes, and for people into mysterious, strange, star-like objects. Which is basically me, and probably many of you as well. But in a nutshell, we're going to be discussing a discovery of what seems to be the brightest and potentially the most powerful black hole ever seen anywhere. Making this record-breaking black hole basically the brightest, the most powerful, but also a black hole containing the largest accretion disk we've ever seen. But what's even more surprising is that this is technically not a new discovery. This object has been discovered back in the 80s and was essentially ignored until now because Nobody thought this was a black hole, and specifically, nobody thought this was a quasar, because it was just way too bright. It was literally believed to be just another star in the Milky Way galaxy. And so this object, known as G0529-4351, for four decades was believed to be just a star, but turned out to be not a star. It literally is the most extreme quasar we've ever seen. And that actually says a lot, because as of 2024, over a million different quasars have been discovered in the entire universe, and so that is a pretty rare object. And so I guess let's discuss what we know about this, but let's start with the discovery itself, because it is somewhat interesting. So some of the first images we have of this unusual star is from 1980. Here this was part of the European Southern Observatory Schmidt Southern Sky Survey, where the initial observations basically listed it as a star. And due to its average brightness, this was not debated by anyone. And because there was nothing special coming out of it, it was kind of ignored for many, many years. And it actually appears in a lot of other surveys and has been seen in a lot of other telescopes, but nobody ever thought this was unusual in any way. As a matter of fact, every other object you see right here are stars in the Milky Way. Then, back in 2018, some of the observations from the super-accurate Gaia telescope once again identified this object as a star, but in this case it wasn't actually moving fast, so it did seem a bit unusual. But the automatic surveys completely ignored it for one simple reason. It was basically too bright. It was too bright to be a distant object, so it was actually assumed to be a star moving super slow, for one reason or another. And so because of its intrinsic luminosity, it was basically completely dismissed by all of the observations up until recently. But then, not so long ago, one of the Australian teams decided to take a look at this using other telescopes. The team, whose paper you can find in the description, used the Siding Spring Observatory, completely by accident, identifying this as a quasar and not a star. And though this was not unusual at first, it became pretty unusual when they realized how, once again, bright it was. Here, this object existed when the universe was only one and a half billion years old. This is what we refer to as the Cosmic Noon. And it's actually when most of the quasars were extremely powerful as well. It's called the Cosmic Noon because during this time we had some of the brightest quasars and also some of the most active star formation as well. The entire universe was basically at its brightest. And so the light from here took approximately 12 billion years to reach us. But even at this point, this black hole was already really massive. 17 to 19 billion masses of the Sun, which is already pretty difficult to explain. But that could still be explained. What is very difficult to explain is everything else about this object. First of all, the accretion disk. It's the largest ever seen. Here, the accretion disk is approximately 7 light years across. That's larger than anything we've ever seen anywhere, and it's basically the main reason this object is so bright. That's almost double the distance to the nearest star from our planet. And because of this enormous size and, obviously, enormous mass, this is essentially an extremely voracious black hole. It seems to consume an entire solar mass every single day. Which basically means that it grows by approximately 370 solar masses every year. Which means that, technically, if this black hole has been consuming this much mass this entire time, it would really only require 46 million years to reach its current size. And what's intriguing is that it's definitely growing pretty much at the maximum possible limit. If it was growing any faster, it would just become too luminous, reaching what's known as the Eddington limit. This is essentially the limit of luminosity, where the pressure from the light itself, from the photons, becomes so powerful that it actually counteracts gravity, and so nothing can no longer fall into the black hole, 
essentially preventing the black hole from growing. But in this case, it seems to be feeding at a relatively constant rate, and it seems to show no signs of slowing down. It's actually relatively stable. But obviously, how any of this is possible is not a question anyone can currently answer. There is no mechanism that can explain this massive accretion yet, and we have no idea to explain its massive disk either. But I guess what's really extreme about this is how much energy is produced as a result, or I guess how luminous it is. And so yeah, even though here it's only seen as a tiny star mimicking some of the Milky Way galaxy stars, in reality it produces approximately 500 trillion times more luminosity than our Sun. And in terms of pure energy, the intense friction and a lot of interaction of particles in a disk heat up all of this so much that it's potentially trillions of degrees in temperature and basically creates emission producing something like 2 times 10 to the power of 41 watt of radiative energy. Or as much energy as our sun is going to produce in its entire lifetime. Or I guess even more intriguingly, as much energy as is usually detected from a typical type 2 supernova. But in this case, this monstrous black hole produces that every single second. And has been potentially doing this for a very long time. And so for any star or I guess any planet in the vicinity, it's like literally having these constant supernova going off in the night skies if you're basically somewhere in this direction facing the accretion disk and the jets. Which I guess technically also makes this the most energetic object we've ever seen. The object currently producing the most energy anywhere. With a total power of being one supernova per second. Moreover, because of the efficiency of energy conversion here, it's technically way more efficient to get energy from this object than from anything else. So basically here, one kilogram of mass produces the most efficient type of energy. Way more efficient than nuclear power, way more efficient than even supernova. So this is pretty much as good as it gets when it comes to energy production. And so technically, if there are some super advanced type 3 civilizations out there, they would probably take notice and would maybe use this for all of their energy needs. Now, that's assuming of course they exist. And so maybe just maybe SETI might want to take a look at this object in the future. This would definitely make a super powerful battery for anyone out there needing that much power. But chances are that this is actually not the brightest object out there, because as one of the recent studies discovered, some of these quasars can sometimes be actually hidden by the galaxy itself. And in this case, not hidden by the disk or maybe turned this way, but some galaxies, like the one right here discovered at the redshift of 6.6, .6, that also contains a relatively massive quasar, seem to be obscured by the galaxy itself. And so it turns out that some of these younger galaxies, especially starburst galaxies, can contain so much gas, especially if they're really compact, like for example this one is, it's only approximately 3000 light years across, that they basically end up covering the quasar almost completely. And so this recent discovery from a different paper accidentally discovered an entire galactic cluster around one of these dusty galaxies that was hiding a massive black hole in the center. And so it's actually quite possible that many of them are just hidden and still have not been discovered and there will be some other discoveries of even brighter, more massive and more powerful and luminous quasars out there in the next few years. Although in many cases, because the dust here is so thick, it can basically hide most of the light trying to escape, including X-rays. And so finding them is not an easy task. But a lot of these obscured galaxies, and specifically obscured quasars, potentially represent an important evolutionary state for many different young galaxies. Specifically when they're actually still growing, and when they have a lot of dust in the middle, suddenly forming stars everywhere with black holes also growing really massive in size. Which I guess once again reminds us that we're basically reaching a golden age of astronomy with a lot of absolutely incredible discoveries and some of them just completely mind-blowing. Like there is really no easy way to imagine or even to describe this unusual black hole, its accretion disk, its brightness, its total energy and all of its other properties, or obviously to explain how it got this way. This is just way too extreme for modern physics. I mean, it does make sense physically, we just don't really know why it got so big. But because this is still a new discovery, we'll probably know more in some of the future studies. 
And so until those future discoveries, and until those future studies, check out one of the previous videos that actually touches on some of the discoveries from the James Webb that potentially finally solve the mystery of why massive black holes exist so early on. That video should be somewhere in the description. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.